Don't go anywhere, because today we're taking a look at probably one of the most famous curved lightsabers in all of the Star Wars galaxy. This is the 89 Sabres Count Dooku. And how does it compare to the Xeno V3 that we've looked at in the past? Let's get at it. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Collector's Outpost. I am John. So this is, I think, the first curved lightsaber we saw on the big screen, and it was wheeled by Count Dooku. Now, I can't say I'm a big fan of curved lightsabers. Uh, this is a pretty cool looking one, but the, you know, for me, they feel a little awkward in the hand. But I know a lot of you requested to see the 89 Sabres version, and CC Sabres was kind enough to send this over for everybody to check out. I'll put a direct link and a discount code for you down in the description below. But before we dig into this lightsaber, if you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by and checking out the channel and checking out this lightsaber with me. Please drop down, hit that like, subscribe, and notification button for upcoming videos. Videos, and if you're returning, welcome back. Let's dig into this unboxing. Now, CC Sabres does offer a lot of 89 Sabres along with TXQ Sabres. Uh, they have a great selection over there if you want to check them out. But the one thing I really like about 89 Sabres is that they're a little bit more accurate, I feel, than a lot of the uh, Nexus and TXQ Sabres that come out. Not all of them. Some of them are, you know, a little, a little hit and miss here and there. But uh, most of them, I, I absolutely adore what 89 Sabres puts out. Digging on in, we have the Count Dooku lightsaber, the chrome-plated fingerprint magnet of a lightsaber. Now this, honestly, it, it is a beautiful, beautiful hilt. It really is. And we'll dig a little bit more into all of that in a moment. We do have a little toolkit. We have a couple of Allen wrenches and we have a screwdriver and we're gonna need that screwdriver in a little bit to open this on up. We do have a USB charger for the battery. Uh, this was actually the screws and the Allen wrench that come to put together the stands, but I already put the stand together already. So I'm gonna put that aside. And they also give you these kind of museum white gloves and for a chrome plated lightsaber, it, these are good to have on hand. So this is a Profi 3.9 and over here you have a full walkthrough manual uh, that uh, CC Sabres put together for everybody. Uh, what is this, one page, two page? This is two pages. And this will walk you through everything from battery installation, installing the blade, how to turn your lightsaber on and off, uh, ignitions, and, and it's broken down really nice for you. Clash effects, lockup effects, drag. Uh, all this stuff. So do go through this if you've never used a Profi before. And of course, it comes with a 7.8 NeoPixel blade. So it's not the typical one inch that we'll see with a lot of the TXQ and LGC stuff. Um, this is a 7.8, so it's a little bit thinner, uh, which means don't bang this thing around too much uh, because these blades will break rather easy. They're definitely more like show blades, but they're really bright. And I really love those things. And then we also get a really nice screen accurate blade plug, which does light up. And we do get some really nice shine through over here. Uh, this is not a button, it's just like an accent, but uh, we get some beautiful shine through there and right underneath on the pommel, we have some light shine through there as well. And it also includes a really nice 89 Sabres stand. So that is a beautiful, beautiful display piece right there. Now just a quick side-by-side -side of the 89 Sabres and the first Xeno V3 that I reviewed, which was the Count Dooku. And let me tell you, they're kind of hard to tell apart besides a few key little differences. Now the claw here is virtually the same. This is the 89 Sabres here, and this is the Xeno V3. Now on the Xeno V3, you're gonna notice something immediately right at the emitter, is that the 89 Sabres, you cannot see any retention screws over here. It is kind of hidden underneath the claw right there. Um, on the Xeno, you have one, two, three very visible retention screws on this one. And then moving on down to these grooves over here, the Xeno V3, you can see that these are a little bit smaller and these are a little bit thicker. Um, there's actually eight over here and there's seven over here. And according to my little mini master replicas, <laughs> um, there actually should be the seven. So Xeno actually has one more of those little grooves in there. Shift it on down a little bit. They both have pretty much identical rings here. Um, this section is a little bit different. Let me see if I can zoom in. Now the Xeno V3 has a slightly thicker part over here and uh, you can actually see, let me see if I can get that in focus, that uh, over here we do have this little indent I know it's gonna be a little hard to see uh, on the camera, but I'm gonna try to just move it around so you can see it. But right here, we have a little indent just before that grip section there. 
And over here on the 89 Sabres, that does not have that. And according to my Mini Master Replicas, this is also accurate. Now, they both have the gold nubbin over there. Um, on the Xeno V3, that is not a button. On the Profi, that's actually your activation button there. Now, this little uh, crease through the grip there, they're slightly different. Little here, little there, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's pretty good. And that goes um, all the way around there. So and that's pretty accurate. I mean, the Xeno V3 did take their own slight little liberties in design there. And the 89 Sabres does follow more of what's on this master replica. And moving on down, we do have both of these showing different types of metal. So this is more of a matted aluminum look and definitely not that chrome look, but this definitely has more of a flat metal look over here on both of them. Now on the Xeno, both of these, I believe were the buttons, if I remember right. Yeah. Um, on this one, you have the auxiliary on this side and this is the main ignition there. Flipping them up on their belly. This has two very noticeable screws right here and the 89 Sabres is just a little bit less noticeable, but it only has the one. The Xeno also has a little black ring around their button and uh, the 89 Sabres does not. Now a huge thing that really is very different between these two uh, models here is this red accent. The Xeno, which is here, is completely upside down. And the one here is right side up, but it's also translucent because it does light up. I always appreciate when they just go a little bit more and add a little accent light to some of the parts there. I really, really like that. Even though it's not screen accurate, I really do like that. And down here at the bottom of the pommels, you just have different uh, sound venting styles. Now also a big difference is that these grips. I'm not sure what this is. I don't, I don't know if this is more of a plastic or if this is just a painted metal, um, but these are not rubber. These are definitely a rubber grip here. And so is the Master Replicas. So a few of you have asked me that you were trying to decide between the two um, and you want to know which one was more screen accurate and you were waiting for this video. The 89 Sabres is definitely more screen accurate than the Xeno V3. And you're just flipping them over. Yes, they both do have the cover tech. And just for a quick weigh in, the Xeno is coming in at 417 grams. It is quite a bit uh, lighter than the 89 Sabres. That is about 14.7 ounces. And the 89 Sabres is coming in at 673 grams and one pound, seven ounces. So it's basically about double the weight of the Xeno, but I'll tell you, it feels really good. Um, again, I never go by what something weighs basing it on quality uh, because this Xeno is also very nice and it's very beautiful. Um, but uh, the screen accurate one and the one that feels better is definitely the 89. So you're definitely gonna wanna pay attention to this part because pulling this thing apart is, uh, it was, took me a little bit, it was a little bit annoying at first, but once you know where everything is, it's pretty simple. Now it is in three sections. So you have your Profi, which is down here in this section, and your battery uh, compartment, which is up over here. Now to start accessing everything, you're gonna want to use your little screwdriver that it came with, and we're gonna take off the screw right here. Now this will give you access to the battery compartment. So now that that bottom screw is off, we can pull out this section over here. All right, and this is where your battery compartment is. Now to get your battery out, on the side here, there are actually two little push things. You're gonna squeeze and you can pull out your battery. Now to access your Profi board and your SD card, we've gotta get into the pommel section. So what we're gonna do is unscrew your cover tech. It is in there a little snug, but uh, there we go, we've got this little, uh, tiny little profi section here. I mean, that is in there really tight. Let me zoom in. I mean, look at that. That's like not even the size of my pointer finger. I mean, they really, talking about cramming your technology in there. That is definitely crazy. Now over here on the front end of that, we do have our pins and we have our profi connector right there. And the SD card you can see right there, it's just beneath those pins. You can see it, it is blue. So everything is really compact on this lightsaber. Now, when you're putting this in, do put the chassis in correctly. There are arrows on the chassis. That's gonna face towards the bottom of the Profi. Now, remember your Profi is at the bottom, all right? Now, do put your battery in correctly. Now, usually the positive goes towards the blade. On this one, the positive is gonna go in towards the Profi. Positive, 
face this way. You got your arrows facing this way and your positive battery is gonna go here. All right, so positive, negative, and that's gonna go in facing your profi. All right, boys, daddy's gotta swing around some Count Dooku stuff. You guys hanging out there? You're gonna get booped, boop. Oh, you don't like that, boop. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. You're gonna be very difficult to hurt you. Hi, yes, hello, hello. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I know, I know, I know. Let's go inside, let's go inside. Maui was uh, very upset that I had to remove him from the room. All right, let's give this thing a try. Now, the only one complaint I have about this is that I wish it was a single button profi, even though I prefer the two buttons, but uh, the other button is all the way down here. This is your secondary button and you're holding it up over here, but how am I supposed to get down there? So you're gonna have to, you know, hold it in like this kind of, you know, because you can't reach, you can't reach there unless you've got gigantic hands. It's not a huge deal, but I do think that this would have benefited a lot more being programmed as a single button. A Mandalorian and a... I'm a Jedi. Smooth thoughts. Master Windu. Got tip drag, lock up. You're gonna have your typical blasters. Lord Vader. Lord Vader. I'll never join you. you the power. The dark side. Now, I don't think this technically has twist on and twist off due to, you know, the shape. Uh, you don't exactly know where center is. You know, the battery's here, but the profit board's actually off access. But it does have like a swing on, but uh, you can't twist it off. So it does have that. You can turn it on with just a little bit of a swing. Now you can even cycle through your blade styles here. You can see that we're gonna have this uh, fire blade going. And it's a little tricky, but you have to hold the auxiliary and long press the power. So hold and long press and let go. And then it changes that up. All right, let's go again. Auxiliary, long press, let go. So I like the fact that you can cycle through the blade styles that are installed on here. And your accents are doing different things depending on what the blade is doing. Now with the same thing with the auxiliary and power, you can also change your color, except it's a quick press. So auxiliary, quick press. You'll hear the tone and you can just twist. And then when, let's go back to red here. And then when you find the color, you can just do it again. And while the blade is off to adjust the volume, I'm gonna push the power and hit auxiliary. So push and hold, auxiliary. Volume menu. And then to adjust the volume, you just want to twist. Maximum volume. Maximum volume. And then just hit your power. Exiting volume menu. All right, that is it, my friends. This is the Count Dooku 89 Sabres from CC Sabres. Thank you so much to CC Sabres for sending this over for everybody to check out. This is a really, really screen accurate version of this lightsaber, and it belongs in anyone's Star Wars collection. It feels great, it sounds great, it looks fantastic, especially if you really love curved hilt and you love Count Dooku's hilt. This is probably the best version I have seen so far. So drop down below in the comments, let me know what you think of the 89 Sabres Count Dooku lightsaber. Discount code and direct link is down in the description. I will see you all on the next video. Be safe and calm out there in the world. See ya.